Hello YouTube, this is TK338 again with another video. This time I have the Canon A1 which I bought fairly recently um, and I thought I'd do an update video since my AE1 video has become quite popular. Um, first of all, about the same weight as the AE1, it's a more metal on it I believe, although some of it is still plastic. Um, for me the black holds a lot more appeal. Uh, I love the colour of this. Uh, as my previous video had, this has got a 50mm lens on. Um, and I'll take you through a few of the features of it. From the left rear of the camera, we have the ASA, or ISO as we know it today, selection dial. It's quite tricky, but round here there's a little um, notch that you can push in. Sorry, hands in the way and you can twist that, it's a little um, selector turns around and you can select your film speed um, you can also select your exposure so you can change that, it goes from 4 to a quarter uh, I have it set on 1 at the moment, this is the exposure lock button which you push and you can move it to change your exposure quickly um, up here you have a battery check button like the AE1 AE1, yes. Uh, push this button and a blinking to show you have lots of battery left. Over here as well, you have a viewfinder selection mode so you can turn the in display viewfinder on or off. That's off, that's on. It just gives you your film speed, aperture, and what mode you're in. It's compared to modern SLRs, quite basic, but it's useful nonetheless. Over here we have, different to the AE1, which I have over here, the AE1 just has a shutter speed select dial with a program mode on it. The A1 has TV and AV, shutter speed and aperture priority. Um, these can be changed by twisting this here, and you'll see in that little window there, I can't get it to focus, sorry. Uh, you have the apertures are in there. Um, and Back to shutter speed. They also have a really handy little, I love this, mechanical lock on the front. You can actually change, flick it up so you can't actually use, they're, oh, they're adjusted by this dial at the front, uh, like modern SLRs. And you have a little lock that just comes up and stops you from using it, it's quite cool. Obviously your film rewind lever, like the AE1. Your shutter press button, again like the AE1. And you also have A, which is on. L, which is locked. 2, which is a 2 second self timer. And 10, which is a 10 second self timer. Sadly, this camera I bought off eBay, it wasn't in quite as good condition as the AE1 that I bought but it doesn't have shutter squeak as I will now demonstrate the difference between the two actually I'll wind them up first okay so I've set both the A1 and the AE1 to 125th of a second the A1 that is on the desk so it is slightly louder and the AE1 you can really hear that squeak I do need to get that sorted out um, but I haven't actually managed to use it properly yet uh, also, the AE1 has the um, exposure count up there for film, and the A1 has it hidden slightly behind. Sorry if I'm getting these confused. Uh, but the black camera is the A1, the silver topped camera is the AE1. Looks wise, when put next to the a1, the AE1 does actually look quite amateurish, if you could call it that, ever. It is an incredible camera, um, but the AE1 just doesn't have the amount of dials on the top that the A1 does have. I also, well, as I said at the start, I love the black finish on the A1. They both have the FD lens fitting. Um, they may well take other kinds, but I'm not sure on that. Uh, user manuals are available online, I can link to one, I've got quite a few requests for them, I might put it in the video description of this one, 
um, for one I've found that's really good. It literally is just a photocopy. Uh, we also have the same exposure, memory exposure preview, which literally just brings up a display. It's just these two buttons here. The A1 has seen some real use. Um, up the top, you can see it's missing paint up here. The here it's missing paint. Um, it, I'm not sure if it's coming out on the camera. It does look pretty worn and well used, which is good. Really, these cameras were made to be used. They were made for. This was one of the more professional of the range of the A series cameras Canon made of their time. Um, and actually the strap as well that it's got on at the moment that it came with is a Nikon one. Um, which made me shuffle. In terms of, they all seem to, if you buy one second hand, they all either seem to be body only or come with a 50mm lens. Um, I'm not sure whether that was what they came with stock all the time or what, but it seems to be the go-to lens to have with these cameras. It's nice they step down to f1.8 and all the way up to f22. Um, again, this camera has, the A1 has a A mode, so on, you can set the shutter speed, yeah, it's on AV mode, uh, you can turn this right the way around, if I can find enough for it, to P, you can change the lens to A up here, and then it's in fully auto exposure mode, so the camera will do all the legwork for you, um, just like the A1, and you don't have to worry about it, uh, so much just composing the picture, and it will do the rest for you, as long as you've got the film settings right, obviously. Much more to say about this camera? Not really. I've not used it an awful lot. Not at all. I haven't run film for it yet, actually. I think the light seals need seeing too. Um, down in there, quite grotty. Uh, the the shutter looks an amazing quality, actually. Um, dusty, dusty, and it's also missing a viewfinder cap, which my A1, A E1 did come with. Sorry, um, model number before one million. Um, I'm not sure of any issues relating to this one, but okay. I've put it next to my 1000D or Rebel XS, as it is known in the US. Um, hands down for me, the A1 wins looks every time. Um, feel probably goes to the 1000D. Uh, the much bigger grip that comes out here is much more comfy to hold um, than this. You just sort of wrap your hand around and grab hold of this tiny little battery cover um, but in terms of style and ease of use just being able to but I've used this camera a lot and I still have to sit back take my face away from it work out what settings I'm changing to get a proper look um, this camera I think with time it would be easy enough just to be able to flick through the settings and not have to worry about uh, getting it wrong. You get it right first time, every time. But then again, these cameras, when they were made for their time, both intended for completely different markets. But I also love the look of cameras, the feel, um, everything about them. And from that point of view, this camera wins. Okay, here I've taken off the lens just quickly. I've left it there to avoid dust getting in as much as possible. Um, it's a pretty dirty lens so I'm not too fussed about the lens part the camera um, amazing big mirror inside of there full 35mm size obviously the uh, newer cameras unless you spend a lot of money on a full frame one a 5D Mark II I think is the first full frame in Canon's range um, you're going to be forking out a huge amount of money for a sensor in co comparable size the viewfinder as well in this in comparison to my 1000D is huge, it's huge and bright and it looks amazing. Um, it hasn't got as many focusing points, just the one in the middle um, and then you rely on your eye to focus that obviously no autofocus here. Um, but 
in terms of being able to look through and compose a picture, it's a much more pleasant experience on this camera. At the end of the day, buying these old cameras makes me feel really guilty. Um, they were made to be used uh, heavily and I will never, in the foreseeable future as a student, have the money to be able to use these cameras as they were intended. That said, they've had a good life and they're not going to be unloved, rusting away in an attic. The A1, or the easier and more available AE1, are brilliant cameras to get and this one in particular very readily available for cheap cheap money as are lots of others uh, 35mm old SLRs the lenses everything you can buy for peanuts in comparison to a new SLR system digital SLR system if you look at that from that perspective not factoring in film cost these are by far more worth it and a lot more rewarding personally I find okay just quickly uh, a last couple of specs um, on the camera itself not including the lens we have the ASA which can go from 6, I've never seen a rated 6 ASA film, although you probably do it for exposure reasons, um, right up to 12,800. Modern DSLRs can actually go up to a lot higher than that, um, but I'm not sure about the highest rated film you could buy actually when it was available, um, readily anyway. Exposure goes from a quarter to four, or the arrow is set on one, so that's the one you'd have it set on. Um, shutter speed, if I can get it without blocking the light, uh, goes from P or a thousand right down to 30 which you can set yourself uh, which is really good that AE1 actually stops at 2 before it goes to bulb and bulb obviously this one has as well so you can have it open for hours if you like taking pictures of night sky or something. Aperture that goes from where is it? Oh, that is on its lowest. Sorry, uh, there's 1.4. It's saying there, but it's got a dot below 1.4. Don't know if it goes. There you go. Can you get focus? Yeah, I don't know if it goes below that, and it goes all the way up to 22. I will admit as well, I've looked through the manual, and I can't quite figure out how the aperture priority works. I'm not sure whether you set it to A on the lens and just choose your aperture on here or whether you have to set it on the lens and on here simultaneously. I thought I'd conclude just with a shot of all three cameras um, together. All three, once again, I said it last time, fantastic though, brilliant cameras. If you just want to go out and take photos, any one of these would do. In, as a matter of fact, um, depends on what you can get hold of, what sort of money you have. There are thousands of cameras out there. It doesn't have to be one of these. 35 millimeter old film SLRs are so much fun. They really are. They have so much more of a characteristic feel to them. They feel like a proper camera. Um, that said, this is what I take out every day. So that wins every time for me in terms of practical practicality um yeah but thank you for watching and i will see you in my next video